Okay, so this was my first winter flounder trip back in October 2017. Definitely the most tedious fishing I've done all last year. But they are very tasty. So, I suppose it was worth it. So here I'm using a simple three-way rig um, with, I think, number four gammy bait holder hooks and gulp floating trout worms. They were hitting these worms good early in the season. As the water temperature cooled, they really preferred real bait. Um, clams, sandworms, I think clams had a slight edge at the end of the season. My cousin Mark did a lot more of this fishing than I did. So after that first fish, I was so bored that I tied on my two inch slab wrap. This is a bait I used all summer and fall for porgy fishing, just to see what was down there. And its bait weighs about a quarter of an ounce. You let it sink to the bottom and you work it pretty much like a jig. Lift and then watch your slack line for bites. Alright, so while I'm really in this fish, let me know in the comment section below what your first saltwater species will be in 2018. My cousin seems to think that we're going to be hitting winter flounder come April when the season opens, but God, I, I, I'd rather do almost any other kind of fishing, to, to be perfectly honest. They're very tasty, but man. Fluking is 10 times more fun, in my opinion. So anyway, let me know what your first target saltwater species All is right, in you. your neck of the, the woods. Fluke. Well, I'm using a little rip and wrap. I thought I'd be catching maybe some sundials. There were reports of hickory shad. But yeah, no, this was um pretty nice surprise. And I would have kept fishing for fluke except I didn't have a keeper yet, so go check that out. Yeah. Look how he's hooked. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he was too impressed. So after this, I went back to winter flounder fishing, and yeah, this this was interesting. It seemed like a really strong rod this guy's using. Yeah, I guess it was some kind of ugly stick, or I don't know, but I've never seen that before. And there's my first keeper winter flounder in decades, really. Uh, pretty close. Got a measuring <laughs> Thank you. And that nice gentleman is Harry. My cousin fished with him quite a bit. Oh yeah. And yeah, very, very nice set of people on this bulkhead. What's sitting down there? So apparently the DEC is on a stakeout mission. It's a good thing in my opinion. Need more of that. Good. I want to see more of these. Well, the limit's two, right? Yeah. Two at 12 inches? Yeah. All right. So I didn't have a bucket of water. I just bled it out in a plastic bag. Just bulkhead fishing. That's a fat. Look at that. Yeah, dude. Look, just grab it, pinch it by the shoulders. Wow. 
It's just fat everywhere. Look at that. Film it. <laughs> yeah, that's thick, man. It's a thick fish. It's thicker than the fluke. All right, so we're doing a pretty classic pan fry flounder dish. And I did attempt to cut the scales off this flounder like I did with fluke. You can see it in one of my previous videos. That didn't work out so well. So just use the edge of your blade and just scale them. They're very small scales. They don't fly anywhere. And here I'm seasoning with salt and pepper and then wrapping it up in paper towels and just letting it hang out. Let the salt soak in for 10 to 15 minutes while I prepare the rest of the mise en place. And this is how you should prep all your fish. Um, salted or not, just wrap them in fresh paper towels and then tin foil. Alright, so the mirepoix is very simple. It's white part scallion. I added some shallots, uh, ginger, and lots of very roughly chopped garlic. And then finally, the green part of the scallion for garnish. And now we're dusting the fish in cornstarch. You want to coat the fins, everything should be crispy, but then you want to try to get rid of all the excess cornstarch. You don't want a thick layer. All right, just a very thin dusting. So here we're using grapeseed oil. You can use canola. And once the oil is hot, just give it a quick test. All right, it's bubbling. Gently lower the fish in away from you. And now it's just a game of tilting the pan and sliding the fish to the edges of the pan to make sure that it's being cooked through. And a fish spatula is a very useful tool, not just for fish, for especially for grilling, you know, burgers, hot dogs, anything really. All right, so now you go flip the fish, again, very gentle, don't plop the fish down and there you can see where I cut the scales away we got a little bit more color than I wanted so next time just scale the whole fish alright so now we just rest it on dry paper towels let it drain and then we can start on this basic pan sauce so again, a touch of grapeseed oil or any neutral oil, not extra virgin olive oil. Your mirepoix goes in, a pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, and just kind of sweat these down. You don't want too much color, but a little color is okay. And while that's going, we're going to mix our sweet soy sauce. So that's dark soy. I'll leave a link to, to the particular brand below. And then sugar, that's it. The measurement's not that important. If I had to guess, it's probably equal parts sugar to dark soy. Basically, you're making a saturated syrup with the soy sauce. And once you can't dissolve any more sugar into that solution, you're done. Um, just don't pour the sugar crystals in the pan. And the sauce is ready. We're going to glaze with just a couple of tablespoons at most of rice wine. You can use sake. And the alcohol, like most dishes, most techniques, you have to cook it out. So give that a couple minutes. 
make sure the raw alcohol taste is is cooked off and then you can add your sauce here I'm just getting the flounder ready on the plate because once the sauce is reduced by maybe 10 20 percent you want to sauce your fish right away and this is all part of mise en place just means having everything in its place you're not you know if, if if the sauce is ready but your fish is not and you have to go yeah that that's that's not the right way here I'm just giving you a quick taste and we're not thickening the sauce the sauce has enough sugar and we're reducing it just by a touch so this is not a thick gloopy cornstarch slurry kind of sauce and that's it Sun. and at the very end we'll just garnish it with the sliced scallion greens that's optional I think it looks fine just like that but since we have it never hurts put a little green on the plate so this dish is part of family Sunday dinner and we're gonna do the taste test in the dining room and it does get a little chaotic a Chinese family dinner how do you do it? Yeah. how do you do it? is it, is it recording? yeah it's already yeah. no 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 is it? It's so much better than fluke. It's just ridiculous. And yeah, winter flounder is orders of magnitude better tasting than fluke, at least when you cook it. All right, there's, there's going to be a couple more catch and cook episodes from last year that I'll upload before the saltwater season starts. And this year, I'm going to expand my horizon a little bit, do some freshwater species, and yeah. That's it. So thank you for watching.